Greetings to you all today. I am coming from an abandoned classroom, as you can see, uh, looking behind me. Uh, this is in Wanga School. It is a Christian school. It is in Choma, Zambia. Just to give you a little backdrop, we're having a little bit of a challenge trying to get things uh, set up the way uh, we need to have them. But I pray that you would bear with us. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of thoughts in a Christian life. You know, our minds are really incredible things. And God tells us that we are going to be accountable for our thoughts, doesn't he? When he says things like that a man will give an account for uh, every idle word he speaks, where does that idle word come from? It will come from inside and it will corrupt. Uh, when he says that whosoever looks with lust has committed adultery, that's obviously something that's happening in your mind and inside. And so we know that God is very serious about our thoughts. Everything kind of hinges on that. If we consider the Christian classic, The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, one of the continued things that was going on during Christian's journey, he would have different interactions uh, uh, with other Christians along the way, other people who were helping him, instructing him. And when they would come to a time I remember one instance, I believe, was he and, and Hopeful were walking through this uh, big open field, a field that could have put them to sleep. They chose to talk about the Lord. They chose to talk about Christianity. And in other words, they were focusing their minds where they should be. And this is very important for us, and it's very difficult. When it comes to imaginations, God has said that our imaginations are evil continually. And so we must try to direct our thoughts as much as possible and uh, not give in to these temptations because one thing will lead to another. The scripture I like to focus on in this comes from uh, 2 Corinthians 10, or we'll read verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, this might sound like a very tall order. And in fact, I think it is. It almost sounds like it's a matter of willpower, but it really isn't. It's a matter of choice because the power in this is going to be brought to us through the Holy Spirit. We remember that in Romans 8.11, we are resisting in God's power as he's telling us to crucify the flesh daily. He's saying that if the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, raised Christ from the dead, if that dwells in you, it will also quicken your mortal bodies. So it's really about a choice that we make. The real power, the real work comes from God. The first point I'd like to make about this is idleness. When our minds are idle, it brings imaginations. And this is why we ought to be focused in our minds. I am not one who is in favor of just keeping busy all of the time, just blind busyness. But we need to direct our thoughts and say, oh, Lord, please, I'm, I'm bringing my thoughts captive to you. Please direct them in the way they should go. Please steer me from temptation and whatnot. It's very important uh, that we do this. But if we are idle, this, this lends toward imaginations. I hear the, the children are being rather boisterous right now. They have final exams, and that is always a, a time of excitement when they have a little, a little time off. You know that our hearts are evil also. They are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know them, the Bible says. And so for this, our hearts kind of deceive us uh, and that's what, that's what the imagination comes about, and it can happen very quickly. And this is why our minds need to be focused and just take a little time to pray and seek the Lord uh, about our decisions from moment to moment. Oh, Lord, do you want me to go here at this time? Oh, Lord, should I purchase this cereal instead of another cereal? I mean, those things may sound kind of trivial, but we train our minds to get in the habit of seeking the Lord and not just randomly, you know, going off into space and deciding whatever they want to do. 
Another thing we need to avoid very much is bad company. For this, I'd like to read, this is a, a classic verse from Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. You know, the Bible has told us that bad company corrupts good morals. I don't need to tell you, I shouldn't have to tell you what bad company does. And this can be in a number of ways. It could be direct or indirect. You could be hanging with a group or it could just be one-on-one, -on -one, but bad company will corrupt you. We're not supposed to hang around with those that are rebelling against God. And here is uh, uh, the verse from Psalms 1, 1 and 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's how we avoid it. That's why we kind of train our minds to love that thing, to love the law of the Lord. See, our flesh, we say that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, and our flesh always wants to rebel against God. It wants to go another direction. So we need to bring those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. You would also want to avoid bad habits. Now, I can't begin to say what all bad habits each person might have that would take your thoughts away. But of course, television or mindlessly surfing on the Internet, these things can take your thoughts away. And sometimes, like with the Internet, things come up you never would have thought of. And it puts a suggestion into your minds. It's something to really be guarded against and to know that our enemy is prowling about as a roaring lion seeking to devour us. Another thing I like, like to suggest avoiding is negative talking. You know, the devil is listening to us when we talk. He can hear if we're discouraged. He can hear the things we're saying. Not only that, it just kind of beats us into the ground. If you look at Philippians 4.8, where it's saying, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, are of good report, things of that nature, to think on these good things. Think of the things that are praiseworthy worthy to God. It is not a denial of the trials that you're going through, but it's realizing that God is taking care of you. There is still good that he is bestowing upon you. And it's, it's a way not to get caught into a, a negative spiral down. Train your thoughts for obedience to God. We also th see things like from Ephesians, Ephesians 5.19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, good Christian music for praise and worship, and just for focusing our thoughts, very, very helpful, and I would suggest it greatly. I would like to encourage you all, though, just to stand on the scripture, as I had said before. If the Spirit of the Lord that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. And this is according to your willing mind. In 2 Corinthians 8, 12, the Lord says, that he accepts it if we first have a willing mind. It is accepted according to what we have and not according to what we don't. We are dependent on the Lord for his power, so we come before him and we are claiming those things. I mean, it's not so much of a name it, claim it. I mean, this is a promise God made to us. He gave us his spirit. It's something we can hold on to. We say, oh Lord, I bring my thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. I cast down these imaginations that are getting in our way. Oh, brethren, it is ever so important that we focus, that we absolutely focus our minds on Christ. Because our minds, I guess, I, again, I say they are strong and they will just go spinning off in every any direction. And only too many times it's going to lead us from the Lord. I mean, praise God for his grace and his mercy. But if we love him, we want to do those things pleasing in his sight. So we will remember to take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ by his own power, the power that raised Christ from the dead. I hope this is a blessing to you. Have a good day.